God bless all of you on tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to this Hour of Power broadcast with yours truly, Prophetess Hardison. And it's such a pleasure to have you joining me tonight for another exciting hour of power. And I'm praying today that you've had a fantastic week in spite of your obstacles, in spite of your trials, in spite of whatever you have gone through with. I pray tonight that your week has been fantastic. And I thank God my week has been fantastic. I've learned how not to let these things take me down because things will come. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the hour of power. If this is your first time joining us, please say something on the camera, so uh, on your screen, so I will know that this is your first time. And if it is your first time, I welcome you to come and be with us on Saturday night. We spend a little time talking, going over the Word of God, and helping us. This is an hour of empower, hour of power. And God gave me this to help empower other people, men, women, children, boys, and girls, to empower them on their walk with him, to help you to become everything that God said that you would become. So I thank God for you. Thank God for my supporters, the one who support me with your comments, your likes, by sharing my videos, by following me when I'm out preaching and I'm doing live. Thank you, because you don't have to do that. So I say thank you. I praise God for you doing that. Thank you for letting me know that this ministry is blessing you. And as I tell you, you are a blessing to me. I reverse that and let you know that you are truly, truly a blessing to me. And I can't start out without giving you a cyber hug and letting you know that I love you. Yes, I Love you. And we live in a world today where the love of many has waxed cold. And you don't find many people who are really truly loving the God kind of way. So I want you to know that you are loved, that you are appreciated, and I thank God for you. So as you're coming on, please like this video broadcast. Please share it. Please invite some of your friends to come on and listen and let us all be blessed together. How many of y'all want all of us to be blessed? All of us shall be blessed tonight according to the word of God. Last week we had a fantastic hour of power and I thank God for my cousin Kathy. Uh, we had an exciting hour of power talking about renewing your mind and we got a discussion going on on my page and I've been quite busy this week and I didn't get a chance to go back on there to respond or to reply but I want some of you to go back on my page and let's join this discussion. Let's make this a discussion. We talked about renewing your mind. It got very emotional it was a very touching time for me, and I thank God that God let me share some of my stories, some of the things that I have endured in my lifetime, and I've received so many testimonies via Facebook, some right there on the page. I had some in back boxes, and they were letting me know, that people were letting me know just how much they were blessed last week, how they were delivered, and how they were set free by the Word of God. And that's all it's about, the Word of God. Not about me. It's not about you. But it's about the Word of God. So tonight, I was meditating. I'm still on this mind thing because I realize how important it is, how serious it is. Our mind is very powerful. Your mind is a battleground. The enemy can't fight you any other way except he get in your mind. And once he gets in your mind, he will overtake you. He will overthrow you. He will make you do what he wants you to do. So my topic that I want to share with you tonight is what do you do? Since your mind has been renewed. What do you do since your mind has been renewed? We all have a part to play. We all have a responsibility in this. Once our mind has been renewed, I pray that you are still in that process of letting your mind be renewed. You, you, and you, listen really good. You have a part to play in this. You have to do some things yourself 
to keep your mind renewed because Satan is not going to give up that easily. Once he sees that you are moving in the right direction and you are getting your mind to where to the place where God wants it to be, Satan will not stop. He will come after you even harder. Even as I was preparing for service on last night, I heard the spirit drop St. John 10 and 10 in my spirit. He said, a thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And the Lord began to let me know. He said, I told you he comes. And I told you the three things that he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So I'm letting you know tonight that while you're on this journey and while you're on the process of renewing your mind, that the enemy is coming and he wants to stop you in your tracks. But you know tonight, we pull that down and we are not going to let him stop us. We're going to keep our minds renewed in the word of God. So I want to roll from where I left off on last week from 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, the King James Version. What, what must you do in this process of keeping your mind renewed? 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, casting down imaginations. Come on, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The word didn't say that God or Jesus was going to cast this down, but it said that you, you have a part to play. You have to cast down the imagination, the things that come into your mind. A lot of people are walking around now imagining things that are not good. If you use your imagination in the right way, it will be a blessing. But if you let your imagination have you going in areas that you should not go, you will find out that it will be a curse to you. You will find out that you will be defeated. Come on. You have to cast down these imaginations. And the word says, and every high thing. That exalt itself against the knowledge. What's coming up against you that don't want you to know the knowledge of God? You've got to counteract every thought that comes into your mind that goes contrary to the knowledge of God. That's why it's vitally important that every one of you know God for yourself. It's vitally important that you have a personal relationship with him. It's vitally important that you know God for yourself. You cannot go on what mama knows. Y'all hear me? You cannot go on what father knows. You cannot go on what brother knows. You cannot go on what sister knows. But you, you and you, you have to have a personal relationship with God so you will have the knowledge of God. And then when you have the knowledge of God, if anything comes up against you and try to take that knowledge away from you, you say, hold up. I know it's not God. I know who God is. I have the knowledge of God. I've walked with God. God has talked with me. I've been with God. And I know this is contrary to the word of God. So you don't let that stuff bother you. So we cast it down. Everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The scripture goes on to say, and bringing, bringing, that's it, I-N-G, still, that's ongoing process, and bring it into captivity, every thought. You have to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means you have to make your thoughts obey you. Come on. You have to make your thoughts obey the word of God. You have to make your thoughts lined up. So therefore you capture those thoughts. When they come into your mind, you have to put them in a prison. Nobody can put your thoughts in a prison for you. You are the one who must take your thoughts and put them in a prison. So tonight, we are going to bring into captivity. I'm capturing every thought. And I'm making every thought in my mind line up. It's going to come into obedience of Christ. Thoughts, you are going to line up tonight. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither my ways your ways. So, if your thoughts are not brought into subjection, you're not thinking like God would have you to think. 
And I told you, God is not coming down here. He's not going to sit on your lap. He's not going to open up your head. He's not going to open up your mind and say, thoughts come into captivity. That's your responsibility. And I'm finding out that we in the body of Christ, you've heard me say it numerous times, we are lazy. We don't want to do the work. But when comes a time in our life, we have to do the work. We have to bring every thought into captivity. And I don't know about you, but I'm capturing those things. It may not be easy at first, but once you start practicing, once you start conditioning your mind, you have to be preconditioned that you must take all these thoughts that are coming at you, trying to infiltrate you, trying to penetrate your mind. You have to take those thoughts. You have to bring them captive and say enough is enough you are not going to talk in my head come on you have to say you are not going to talk in my head sometimes we let the enemy talk in our head he gets the best of us but it's up to you it's up to me I have to take charge of this I have to take charge of this and I let the devil know the buck stops here you are not going to talk in my mind I bring that thought into captivity. Devil, I cast you out of my mind. You don't have to have anybody lay hands on you. You don't need anybody to oil you down with oil. You don't need anybody to prophesy over you. God has given you as a believer power. He has given you as a believer authority. And you can speak to your mind. And you can free your mind from every thought. Not one. Not two. Not three, but every thought that the enemy is bringing up against you. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Your life is dependent on this. Your future is dependent on this. Your next move in God is dependent on you to bring every thought into captivity. God is telling you. God is showing you what he wants to do. Yet the enemy comes and tells you, you know that wasn't God. You're not able. You're not capable. You're not qualified. That's a thought. Oh, God, that's a thought. And if you believe that thought, you will have yourself just going right along with what the devil said. No, I'm not able. I'm not qualified. I'm not this. I'm not that. You have to bring that thought into captivity. Capture those thoughts. You have to capture every thought. And you make your thoughts. Come on. You must make your thoughts become obedient to Christ. God is not going to do this for you. I cannot emphasize that enough. He's not going to do that for you. You must do the work. You have to do the work. You, 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 and you. Everybody listening, you have to do the work. You've got to let the devil know that I'm bringing these thoughts into captivity. You will no longer reign. You will no longer rule. You will no longer make my mind weak. You will no longer have my mind to be somewhere it should not be. I take charge. I take authority over everything. Come on. Over everything that you're trying to do. You've got to make every thought that is not like God. You make it. You make that thought become obedient to God. God said and this is what it is. God said, and then it's so. God said, find you a word of God. Base it upon the word of God. Stand on that word of God. Let that devil know, I'm bringing all my thoughts. I'm making them become obedient to Christ. You take authority. Sometimes we as being a Christian, as being a believer, we do not realize the authority that God has already given unto us through his son, Jesus Christ. Each one of us have already been authorized. We have been deputized. We have the authority to put these things under our feet. And I don't know about you, but it's time tonight to put Satan under your feet. He's ruled long enough. He's reigned long enough. But I know it's something I've got to do. So since I know it's something I've got to do, I'm bringing these thoughts. Honey, I'm pulling down. I'm casting down these imaginations. Honey, you're not going to make me imagine the wrong thing. You're not going to make me see the wrong thing. Honey, the devil is taking over people's minds. Come on up in the room. He's taking over people's mind now. Doing things on you. Playing war games on you. It's time now for the war games to stop. You hear me real good out there. It's time now 
for the war games to stop. We cannot let the enemy play war in our mind. The war ends here tonight. The battle ends here tonight. You will not control me. You will not manipulate me. You will not dominate me. Because I take control over you. I recognize you. And I know these thoughts are not God thoughts. I recognize your talk. See, you got to, you got to spend, spend time with God so you can recognize when the devil is talking to you. What's wrong with us sometimes? We don't spend enough time with God. And when the devil starts talking, we think it's God. Come on up in here. But when you spend time with God and you hear the voice of God, you know it's God. The Bible said, my sheep know my voice and no other voice will they follow. So when you know, the voice of God. When you have been in communion with God. When you have spent time with God. When the enemy comes in. You say no. Nope, this is not God. This is not God. This is not God. You are responsible. Hear me real good. You are responsible for doing something. You are an active participant. In your own deliverance. Come on. You are an active participant. In your own deliverance. Once you get delivered. You've got to do something to stay delivered. When a person is delivered from drinking liquor. If he goes around people that drinks liquor. Or alcohol for the proper folks out there. He'll end up drinking again. Why? Because he went around the wrong people. He went around the wrong stuff. And he was not strong enough. To keep himself free. So. As God is dealing with you. God is working with you. You got to get with somebody else who's moving in the same direction that you're moving on. You can't get with people who do not have a mind for their mind to be renewed or their mind to stay focused on Christ. You have got to get with the right people. You play a very important part in your deliverance. You can be delivered. You can be set free, but you got to get around people that's on the same path. So many times we get saved, we get delivered, and we go back. We go back to our buddies. We go back to the same friends. I'm not saying you turn your back on them, but you can't rub shoulders with them. You can't do the same thing that they were doing or they are doing. Why? Because it will pull you back. If you don't pull them, they will definitely pull you. So you have to take part. You've got to take part in what God is doing to you. You have to speak to your mind. Oh, yes, Lord. You. You and you, you have to speak to your own mind. You got to let your mind know that it's over, that my mind has been renewed. Mind, do you hear me talking to you? I don't care what you say, mind. My mind has been renewed. And once you're on this transition of your mind being renewed, you don't think like you used to think. Come on. You don't have the same kind of thoughts coming out of your mind. You don't have the same speech coming out of your mouth. You don't go the same places you used to go. Why? Because your mind has been renewed. Your mind tells you you can't go there. Your mind says you can't do that. Why? Because now you have the mind of Christ. What some of you people need to do is pull the power source. Come on. You pay an electric bill for the devil to rule your mind. Uh-huh. You pay an electric bill for the devil to rule in your mind. But you need. To go in the spiritual realm and pull that plug, pull that plug, pull the plug, pull the power source from every thought that's not like God. It's time to get radical. The man of God preached to me last night. He said, take it. And see, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. You cannot walk around here easy going, laughing with the devil. You have got to get radical. You have got to mean business. If you don't mean business, the devil is somewhere just laughing at you. Because he knows that you do not mean business. We are coming into the knowledge of God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm so glad tonight that I'm coming into the knowledge of God. And that's a renewal of my mind that transforms me. When I come into the knowledge of God, I go through this transformation. It renews me and it liberates me from the deceit. Come on. 
from the lies of the devil. Once you get renewed, you get liberated. Come on. The devil will not be able to hold you. His tactics won't work on you any longer. You are being set free. You are liberated. The Bible says whom the son set free is, is free indeed. Now we are set free. We have been delivered. The devil can't hold you no any longer. He doesn't have power over you any longer. Your mind has been set free. Your mind has been delivered. Your mind controls you. So when your mind is delivered and your mind is set free, the devil loses his power. Come on. His power is gone. He can no longer be your master. He cannot longer be your boss. Come on. He's not your landlord. Come on up in here. He's not your landlord. He can't make you do nothing. Sometimes people say, the devil made me do it. Well, I beg you pardon. He didn't make you do nothing. That stuff was already there. And God just let it come out of you because he wants you to know, girl, man, woman, boy, and girl, these are some areas that you got to work on. That stuff was down there on the inside. It's been hidden for a long, long time. It's time to break free from the enemy. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but it's time to break free from the enemy. The enemy has rolled you long enough. Sometimes you let the enemy get on your back and ride you like a horse. It's time to break free. It's time to break free. It's time to break free from the enemy. He will no longer ride you. You better let the devil know tonight you will not ride me any longer. You will not sleep with me any longer. You will not eat with me any longer. You won't talk to me. Because when you try to talk to me, I'll say, oh, wait, 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 wait. Something wrong with this talk. It's not God's talk. It's not God's speech. You stop that stuff. So we got to break free. We've got to break free. If you want to move, if you want to go forward, if you want to be empowered, you have to break free. How many of y'all out there tonight want to break free? I don't know about you, but it's my prayer every day because I say, Lord, you're working on me. I don't profess to have made it in. I don't profess to have everything going, but I say, Lord, I'm breaking free. It's a job. It's a job. But I'm breaking free. Somebody got to break free so they can help somebody else. There's no point in all of us being tied up. Come on. There's no point in all of us having chains on us. There's no point in all of us having shackles on us. We have to break free. 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 Somebody's deliverance is depending on you being free. Somebody's salvation is depending on you being free. Somebody's healing is depending on you being free. Somebody's standing in the gallops and they are depending on you to break free. To break free from this mind game. So you can go back and you can tell them, man, woman, boy, and girl, I came out. And I'm here to help you. I'm here to pull you out. I'm going to pull you out. I'm going to pull you out. By the help of God, I'm going to pull you out. Break free. Oh, God. I challenge you to break free. I challenge you to break free. And you'll discover a life that you never knew you had. I challenge you to break free. And you'll find out where you'll be. I challenge you to break free. And you'll see what God will do for you. God will turn your whole world around. Your whole life will be transformed. When you break free from the enemy and the clutch that he has on your mind, you break free. You break free. I feel, I feel this thing right now. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it down in my Noah. I feel it all in the atmosphere. I feel it in the Facebook land tonight. Somebody's being delivered. Somebody's being set free. Somebody's breaking free right now. What had you bound will no longer have you bound. When you get off this broadcast tonight, you shall be free. You being free right now by the power of God. Because I'm learning to break free. And I'm praying for the minds of the people. I'm praying for my mind. I'm praying for everybody's mind. That's the only way the enemy can manipulate us. He's got to get in the mind. So I say, God, help us all to have a strong mind. Help us, God, so our mind can be strong. When our mind is strong, we can come up against depression. Come on. You can come up against oppression. You can come up against the spirit of suicide. 
You can come up against the spirit of murder when your mind is right. When your mind is right. You can come up against this stuff. When the enemy tells you that you're not worth living. That your life is not valuable. When he try to make you kill yourself. You can say devil you are a liar. In the name of Jesus. Because the word told me I shall live. I don't know what it told you. But I shall live. And I shall not die. But I shall declare the works of the Lord. I don't know about you. But it's time to live. Get your mind free. Break free in here tonight. And you shall Live. Let me read another verse because I'll be staying here all night. Ephesians 4 and 17. God bless you, Brother Frank. For, for Ephesians 4 and 17. This I say, therefore, and testify. Come on, I need some witnesses in Facebook. And testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as of the Gentiles, the non-believers. Don't walk as the non-believers in the vanity of their mind. Something that's useless. Something that's futile. Paul is telling us, I say unto you, and I testify in the Lord. I'm testifying in the Lord, and I'm telling you right now, don't walk as the Gentiles walk. Don't walk as the others walk. Don't walk as the people who are unsaved walk. But walk the way God wants you to walk. Don't walk around in the vanity of your mind. Having useless thoughts. Futeless thoughts. Come on. We cannot walk like that. When we come into the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. We can square our shoulders back. And we can walk in the knowledge of God. Knowing who God is. Now this blessed me real good. The message translation. Of that particular verse it says. And, and so I insist. Listen. And so I insist. And God backs me up on this. Oh y'all don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. As, and so I insist. And God backs me up on this. Oh when God is backing you. You don't need nobody else to back you. Come on. God said, I back you up. And I thank God when I found this verse of scripture. God let me know the message that I'm delivering. The series I've been doing. He's letting me know that I'm backing you up. He said, God backs me up on this. That there be no going along with the crowd. Come on. You cannot go along with the crowd. We have too many People in the house of God trying to rub shoulders with other people, trying to walk as the other people walk, doing what the crowd is doing. The crowd is joking. The crowd is jesting. The crowd is laughing. The crowd is making fun. The crowd is lying. The crowd is backbiting. You cannot walk as the crowd. Come on, come on, come on up in here. You cannot walk as the crowd. You cannot go along with the crowd. Now listen to what it says. The empty headed. Ooh, that's good right there. The empty headed. The mindless crowd. Don't go along with them. They don't have nothing up there to tell me an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. You cannot walk around with the empty head. You cannot go along with the empty headed and the mindless crowd. They don't have any good things up there. They don't even know where they are. Some of them don't even know their name. They don't know their address. They don't even know the cell phone number. And you trying to go along with these mindless people. What's up in here? You cannot go along with them. God's backing me up on this word. Y'all hear me real good. God is backing me up on this word. I wish I had a witness out there. I wish I had a radical bold witness tonight. I wish I had a radical bold witness in, on Facebook tonight. You cannot go along with the crowd. The empty minded people. The minds are empty. They don't have anything in the mind. The mind is just empty. And they're mindless. And you're trying to go along with them. Well they can't take you anywhere. They can't lead you anywhere. They can't guide you anywhere. They can't take you from one state to another state. They can't take you to Walmart. Can't take you to the mall. Can't take you to Belkin. You're trying to go along with them. What's wrong with the picture? We got too many born again people. Too many believers. They're going along with the crowd. The empty, the empty headed people. Empty head. Nothing up there. Don't have any knowledge. They don't have any wisdom. They don't have any word from the Lord. 
You got to get with somebody who's got a word from the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that iron sharpens iron. I got to be around somebody who's sharpening me. And while you're sharpening me, I in turn have to sharpen you. I don't have time to waste with empty-minded people. I don't have time to waste with mindless people. My mind is on God. My mind is on the things of God. My mind is on what God is saying in this hour. My mind is what God is saying for the next move. You got to get with somebody else who's hearing from God. You cannot be around people who are not hearing from God. They will tell you anything. They will tell you everything and want you to believe what they say. If you have not been renewed in your mind, if you have not taken responsibility for these words that you've been hearing, you will go along with that crowd. Well, tonight, I'm pulling somebody out of the crowd. Come on. I'm pulling somebody out of that crowd. I'm taking authority over somebody who's been going with the wrong crowd. Saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing, acting the wrong thing, living the wrong way, empty headed people, mindless people. Oh, this is tight tonight. But it's right. You can't rub shoulders with them. You can't rub shoulders with them. You got to go another way. They don't have anything of value. They don't have anything of value to tell you. So you don't have time to listen to them. They don't have anything good. They don't have anything of value. I need value right now. I need somebody that's going to speak something that's going to edify. That will build up. That will exalt. We got enough tearing down now. We got enough throwing us in the corner now. We need something that's going to build us up. We need to hear something that's got some value to it. Come on. We got to have something that's got some value. These people talking to you, they don't have anything to say of any value. And you're trying to say what they say. Y'all ought to be ashamed. Yeah, I said I better knock on this table. You ought to be ashamed. Don't listen at people who are not speaking anything of any value. They are only detracting from you. They are only taken away from you. You need somebody in your life who will speak to you, that will speak the word of God, that will speak the truth to you, that will help you to grow. And I'm not talking about no made up stuff. I'm talking about the real truth based upon the word of God. You need somebody to speak to you that's going to give you the word of God. The word. Why the word? Because the word shall stand. The Bible said heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall stand forever. You need the word. You need the word. I need the word. The word is the only thing that we have. The word has value. The word has truth to it. And that's what we need in this day and hour. So we got to do it. You don't have to listen to them. You don't have to listen to them. If you have been listening to them, I challenge you to stop listening to them. You may lose some friends after we get through this series about the mind, but you know what? They weren't your friends to start with because you can't lose what you never had. If they are a true friend, they'll want some of what you got. But if they're not a true friend, honey, you will see them walking away. And I tell people, see, when you are moving in God and God is doing a work in you, everybody can't ride in your car. Everybody can't get in your automobile. Your automobile is not built big enough to hold all this negativity. These empty-minded, mindless people, they cannot ride in your automobile. So if they happen to walk away, say it was for my good. It was for my good. It was never for my bad. Because God takes every bad situation and he makes it work for your good. So they walk away. You get happy. And you start praising God. Say, God, that's some weight gone. That's something that I've been delivered from. Now I'm moving on. I'm moving forward in what God would have me to do. You're responsible. You're responsible. You've got to do something yourself. You've got to do something to maintain the renewal of your mind. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do since your mind has been renewed? Some people might say, well, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to think on. The enemy has been filling my mind with so many negative thoughts. And I just don't know what to do. 
I tried, I tried. I just don't know what to do. Yes, you do. I told you, take authority. Take authority over that. Take authority over every thought. Bring every thought into captivity. You do know what to do. You know exactly what to do. But just in case you don't know what to think on, somebody says, well, I don't know what to think on. Because I'm always thinking the wrong things. I'm thinking the bad stuff. Well, get your Bibles. Start opening up the Bible. Reading the Word of God. Ask God to lead you to the scriptures that you need to keep your mind renewed, to keep your mind strong, to keep you focused, keep you going in the right direction. Philippians 4 and 8 from the King James Version. Philippians 4 and 8 from the King James Version say, Finally, brethren, I'm helping you all out tonight, give you something to think about. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are honest, this is what you're going to think on. Don't think on dishonest stuff. Don't think on the wrong stuff. But finally, that means lastly. If you can't, if you can't do nothing else, finally, brethren, sisters, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, not unpure, Say whatsoever things are lovely. Start finding you something else to think on. Think on these things. Whatsoever is lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Think on the good report. Don't think on the bad report. But take think on the good report. The Lord said I'm healed. The Lord said I'm delivered. The Lord said I'm set free. I'm thinking on honest things. I'm thinking on pure things. I'm thinking on just things. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Then it says, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. I've given you some things to think on. You need to bookmark that in your Bible. Philippians 4 and 8. I've given you instructions. And I'm a firm believer that we have to learn how to apply the word of God. We have to learn how to apply the word of God. So I'm giving you something to help you apply what the Lord is saying. Think on the things that are honest. Think on the things that are just. Think on things that are pure. Think on things that are lovely. There and be flowers, pictures, pictures of your family, pictures of your grandchildren, pictures of your dog, pictures of your cat. Come on, find you something lovely. And start thinking about that. Think about things that are of a good report. Think about some things that got some virtue in it. And if there be any praise, think on that. Get some praise going on in your mind. Get some praise going, Lord, I thank you. It's another day, Lord, that you kept me. The devil didn't want me to make it, but it's another day. And, Lord, you kept me. Glory. Hallelujah. You got to get your own praise on. Don't wait till you go to church to try to get a praise. You must learn to praise him in your homes. Praise him in your, on your, in your car. Praise him on your job. I'm not telling you to go to work and act unseemly, but you got to praise down on the inside. And that praise keeps you moving. And you just think about that praise. And honey, before you know it, you're thinking, oh, some good stuff. You think about, oh, God delivered me. God bought me out. The devil thought he had me. But honey, I got away. Think on the good stuff. We spend too much of our valuable time thinking on the wrong stuff. We cannot afford to think on the wrong stuff. And when you think on the things that I just read to you tonight, you will cancel out every thought. That the enemy has been using to infiltrate your mind. See, you can't think bad thoughts and good thoughts at the same time. If you do, you go cuckoo. If you're thinking good thoughts and bad thoughts at the same time, it'll run you crazy. So when you start canceling out what the enemy is saying, start thinking on these things that Philippians 4 and 8 talks about, you will cancel out every thought. Hear me real good. You'll cancel out every thought that the enemy been bringing up against your mind because you're thinking on the right stuff. 
When you start thinking on the right stuff, right stuff will come to you. Sometimes we think on bad stuff. We think on wrong stuff. And that's what we attract. Whatever you think on the longest, whatever you focus on, whatever you give your attention to, that's what you will have. Come on. Whatever you think on, that's what you will have. So you have to learn how to think on the right things. You have to think on the good things. You have to think on the positive things. You have to think on the things of God, and that will attract those things to come to you. But if you spend your life and you spend your time thinking about wrong stuff, then you're going to have all this calamity coming. You have all wrong stuff coming to you. But I don't know about you, but we need the good stuff. How many of y'all need the good stuff? Because God promised us that if we be willing... And obedient that we would eat the good of the land. I'm telling you right now, it's time for you to start eating the good of the land. It's time now to stop eating hog slop. Come on, come on. It's time now to stop eating hog slop. When God said, if I am willing and if I am obedient, then I will eat the good of the land. I don't know about you, but I want to eat God's goodness in this land while I'm living. Somebody said, well, I'll get mine when I die and go to heaven when you go right on. I'm going to have the good stuff. I shall have the good stuff. I shall have the good stuff while I live here in the earth, on the earth, with my earth suit on. I will have the good stuff. Because I'm thinking about the good stuff. I'm thinking about what God has said. I'm canceling out what the enemy has said. He does not have any value. He doesn't validate anything. His words are not true. The devil is a liar. He is the father of all lies. He told a lie in the beginning. He's telling a lie now. And in the end, he still will tell a lie. So I refuse to listen. I refuse to listen. To what he has to say. I'm calling the good stuff to come. I prophesy to you right now. And I tell you start thinking on the good stuff. And the good stuff will locate you. The good stuff will find you. The good stuff will run you down. The good stuff will overtake you. When you get your mind in the right place. Now let me give you another scripture. Colossians 3 and 2. I'm helping you giving you something to think about. Because y'all say, y'all, I don't know what to think about. I, I just don't know what to think about. The devil just been talking to me. Stop letting him talk. Silence him. Come on. Silence him. I have to tell God, I have to silence that demon. I have to silence him. I have to let him know that it's not working today. It's not working. And sometimes you see exactly what he's doing. You know what he's doing. But you have to come in an agreement with the word of God. And say it's not working. You want me to get upset? You want me to get out of character? You want me to rant? You want me to rage? But it's not going to happen. Not on my watch. Not on your watch. Because our minds have been renewed. I'm taking responsibility. You got to grow up. Put on your big girl clothes. Put on your big boy clothes. Put on those boots. Let's be a soldier tonight. Let's be a soldier in the army of the Lord. Let's take responsibility. And say, God, I live and for God I die. Satan, you will not overthrow me. You will not overtake me. I will not let you take me down. Because I'm thinking on the right stuff. When I was a babe in Christ, I didn't know how to think on the right stuff. But thank God tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God. I know how to think on the right stuff. This is why this broadcast means so much. Because it is a time to get empowered. It's time to wake up that spirit that's been lying dormant on the inside of you. It's time to wake up your gift. And it's time to wake up your calling. It's time to wake up your anointing. This is a time of empowerment. We are being empowered. We are the generation that seeks the face of God. We're not seeking his hand, but we are seeking his face. And when you do the research, the face means his presence. I don't know about you, but I seek his presence. And I want to be in the presence of the almighty God. Where the miracles, signs, and wonders are occurring. Don't want to be an outside child looking in. But I want to be inside. 
So we are the generation that are seeking the face of God. I'm not asking God for handouts. Come on. I'm not asking him for a car. I'm not asking him for a home. I'm not asking him for clothes. I'm not asking him for a pocketbook. But I'm seeking his presence. I want to be in his presence. That means more to me today than it ever has meant to me before in my life. I'm seeking his presence. I long for the presence of God. I'm not seeking the hand. Come on. We got too many people seeking the hand. But they don't want the presence. But if you get God's presence, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. My time is getting ready to get away. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you don't have anything being added, it's because you're not seeking. But when you start seeking the kingdom of God first, Every natural thing that you need, it will locate you. That means it will find you. That means that you cannot go anywhere and hide. When you seek the kingdom of God, everything that you need, it will locate you. Hear me real good. It will locate you. It will find you. It will come at your doorstep. God will touch somebody's heart. He'll touch somebody's mind. Go give this to sister. Go give this to brother. It will locate you. We don't have to beg, borrow, nor steal. Come on. But we can walk up right in the kingdom of God. I got to read this verse from the Amplified Version. We're getting out of here. People don't realize I'm on live right now, so y'all had to excuse me. Colossians 3 and 2 from the Amplified Version say, set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above. you got to make this a habit. You have to make this a habit. you got to set your mind and you got to keep your mind focused habitually on the things above. That's the heavenly things and not on things that are on the earth which have temporal value. You have got to set your mind. You got to keep focus habitually. You have to make this a habit every day that your mind is going to be set on things above from the King James Version. Set your affection on things on above and not on the earth. You have to make this a habit. I'm thinking on things that are above. I'm not thinking on things that are down. I'm not thinking on things that are temporal, but I'm thinking on things that have some value. Come on. And once we get lined up with this word, line upon line, precept upon precept, we'll see God do the miraculous. And I'm here to tell you tonight, I'm longing to see God do the miraculous. I want to see God do the miraculous. I want to see God do the miraculous, not for me, but for all of us. We're in this together. Sometimes we get in our own little corner and we think it's all about us. But no, I want to see you get the miracles. I want to see you get the signs. I want to see you get the wonders that God has said. So you got to raise your thinking level. Your thinking level is too low. You have to raise the level. I can't raise it for you. You can only raise it for yourself. You have to raise your thinking level. Think like God would have you to think. Think like God would have you to think. I told you, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. So when the thoughts come and they're not God's thoughts, raise your thinking. My thinking is high now. I, every day I'm raising my thinking. I'm thinking on things that are above and I'm thinking on heavenly things, thinking about what God has shown me, thinking about prophetic words, thinking about dreams. I'm thinking about visions. I'm thinking about heavenly things. I'm raising my thinking. Come on. You have to raise your thinking. We give everything else. You, you don't work on a job forever and ever and ever and don't get a raise. Because you go on a job and work too long and you don't get a raise, you'll try to find you another job. Some of y'all will walk off the job and don't even have another job to go to. Y'all better come on up in here. You'll walk off that job because you didn't get a raise. 
But yet you'll live in your body with your mind and you won't raise your mind. I'm challenging you tonight. Raise your thinking. It's time to raise your thinking. If you want to do better in life, raise your thinking. Don't be stagnated. Don't stay where you are. Don't let the enemy captivate you. Y'all hear me really good. Don't let him captivate you. Don't stay where you are. Raise your thinking. I can do better than this. God has more for me. I can come out of this. I'm raising my thinking. My thinking is going to another level. My thinking is going to another height. My thinking, I'm doing this. I'm raising my thinking. And I'm challenging each one of you tonight to raise your thinking. Oh, you can do it. You have a responsibility that you have to play. What are you going to do now since your mind has been renewed? I've given you the word of God tonight. You're going to cast down them imaginations. You shall bring every thought captive. Then you're going to start thinking on things that are pure, holy, just, and then being in praise. You're going to think on this. And then you're going to set your affection on things above and not beneath. I've given you something to think about tonight. I've given you the word of God. My soul is happy right now. My soul is blessed beyond measure for the word of God. Because in the word of God, we've got a hiding place. In the word of God, we've got everything that we need. Thank you, Reverend Mitchell. You can do this. Reverend Mitchell says she can do it. I need somebody else if you can do it. Because we're winding down now. Somebody else who, can, who knows they can do it. Or you ought to put out there, I can do this. Your life is depending on you doing this. The next move of God is depending on you doing this. If you don't raise your thinking, you'll always be where you are. You'll never come to the place that God has for you. You'll continue to stay there in low ball. You'll stay in a low degree. And God wants you to raise your thinking. He wants you to raise your thinking. Thank you, Sister Phyllis Rose, Missionary Rhodes, out of Garner, North Carolina. You can do this. You can do this. Thank you, Apostle Lee. I can do this. I'm raising my thinking. I'm raising my thinking. Your family, that's right, is depending on you. Everyone connected to you is depending on you to raise your thinking. And I told you earlier about when you think on the good things, how good things will locate you, how good things will find you, and I'm a witness to that. Because God, I put it out there on my Facebook page how the other day. I discovered a financial blessing that I didn't even know I had. And I discovered that and I began to give God praise. I began to give God the glory. Because things will locate you. It will find you. Your stuff has your name on it. But you got to raise your thinking to believe this now. We're getting ready to go. But you have to raise your thinking in order to believe this. Because you'll go off here tonight. And you will not have believed not one word. But I'm here to tell you tonight. If you believe this word tonight. That your good stuff shall locate you. And you believe it with your whole heart, mind, soul, and body. I prophesy to you right now. Some of you getting ready to come out. Some of you are coming out of that low place. You're coming out of that financial poverty. You're coming out of that land of lack. You're coming out of the land of Lodabar because the good stuff is getting ready to locate you. As a matter of fact, it's looking for you right now. It's looking for you, you and you right now. It shall locate you. Keep that thinking up. Grab hold of these words tonight. Say, God, I thank you. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. I give you name to glory. I give you the praise. I give you the honor for what you're doing for us tonight. I praise him. I pray tonight that this broadcast has blessed you. I pray that you have received this word of God. What do you do now? Since your mind has been renewed. I'm inviting you to please like this um, broadcast, share it. We want everybody here because this has been a series. I didn't know I was going to be here on this subject so long. And we may have to go back in here again. 
seeing what the Lord says. Hallelujah. Because I tell you, it's time for the mind to be free. I thank you for taking your time out tonight to be with us on this hour of power. You could have been doing something else, but it's not by accident. It's not by happenstance, but you were already predestined from the foundation of the world to be tuned in tonight. See, that's why we got to look at it. God already knew who was going to be on here tonight to hear these words. And I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I invite you to stay connected to us by visiting my website www.francisdhardison.org.